Yeah. This is not how elevators work in, in LA, right? We have the same elevator technology, I assume. <laughs> yeah, even though it's, it's an old hotel, I'm assuming the elevator was, was renovated. Done. Yeah, it looks yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have that weird, like, great... What you is have, this? Aha, what, what, uh -huh, so that... So yeah, I was I was reading in the research that like apparently this is like one of the most popular videos in China. I mean, to me, it, her hand motions are really weird. So that, I think that's to me, you know, for all the the theories about her hiding from somebody and trying to avoid to somebody, this looks like somebody who's not in their right mind or under the influence of something. Recording. Hello, everyone. This is the Solvable Mysteries podcast. This is episode 28. My name is Juras, and I'm joined by my co host, Glenn Haikov, who is with us today to discuss a very interesting case. How are you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing all right. Um, you know, it's spring here in LA, and the weather's getting nice, and I'm ready to talk about a crazy LA case oh, yeah. uh, today. Yeah. Uh, how, how crazy is this one like this i mean you know everyone knows about this case i think people in lithuania know about this case people in all over europe essentially know about this case um right off the bat you know we are talking about the death of elisa lamb so how 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 big of a news story was this in in the u.s when when, when it was happening in you know 2013 I feel like it was pretty big. So the weird thing is, uh, I was actually working downtown, not far from this, when this was all going on. And then, um, just recently, as we'll talk about, I've been working downtown again. So I'm pretty familiar. I've kind of bracketed this area. But yeah, I remember I was I was talking about it with one of my coworkers in Denver, and he was like all over this thing. So I think it really a lot of people were fascinated by it. Exactly. Um, I feel like we will be returning to this case because um, just a quick, um, just a quick piece of information to our audience uh, that is listening to this episode. There is so much interesting details regarding this case, and uh, personally, I feel like we cannot like um, solve this mystery. You know, because hence the name Solvable Mysteries Podcast. We cannot solve this mystery in episode one. I think we will have to do multiple episodes down the line because of the because of how crazy uh how crazy the the case is and how many various interesting details regarding this case you know there are uh, on the internet so i guess this first episode is going to be more about like just giving a a brief introduction and uh, uh, to this case and just you know just giving our own um set of ideas what actually may have happened i think we will have to return because just i'm not sure that we can uh, cover all the interesting details in in the first hour and 30 minutes uh, or hour and and 10 minutes for how long we are going to go on this podcast so just a uh, i mean a quick brief introduction into the case so um elise lamb the woman that you are seeing right now on the uh image if you're watching this on youtube she was also known by her Cantonese name, Lam Ho Yi. She was a Canadian student. She was studying at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. And she was, um, I guess, uh, she died in really, really unclear, I guess, fashion. Uh, she, her body was actually found in a water tank atop of, of the Cecil Hotel in downtown Los Angeles on February 19, uh, 2013. So she had been uh, reported missing at the beginning of the month and maintenance workers at the hotel discovered the body when the investigating guests complaints uh, completed uh, uh, of like problems with the water supply. So, you know, we're going to go into these details shortly, um, I guess. You know, just to start off the show, uh, I guess, uh, can you give us a little bit of a background on Lisa and, you know, where she came from, maybe who, who, how she grew up, uh, if you have this information? 
Yeah, so um, she was the daughter of uh, immigrants from Hong Kong who opened a restaurant uh, over in uh, Vancouver, Canada. And actually, um, just for note, for kind of, I guess, probably the audience that isn't from either around here or, or the international audience, Vancouver uh, area is known for having a high number of um, Asian immigrants. Um, the okay. West Coast, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean especially so, I think, um, even compared to even, I mean, the West Coast in general, the United States, um, definitely has a high um, number of Asian immigrants from different countries. But yeah, Vancouver is especially known for, for really like like having a, 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 a very large presence. From, so from, yeah, just a quick interruption from what I've heard, a lot of chi- rich uh, Chinese nationals actually go to live in Vancouver because, um, you know, when they essentially somehow make their fortune down in China, um, you know, they can sort of, I guess, secure their wealth by um, acquiring various businesses and real estate in Vancouver, and they're free from, you know, a persecution from the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, which tends to be a little bit, you know, rough when 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 political powers shifts. Let's say you have been aligned with this political figure, uh, now he's not in power, and your assets are pretty much in danger of being, uh, you know, privatized. I, I mean, uh, state-owned, essentially. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's just, it is an interesting wave of of immigration because, yeah, I think before that, before um, the mainland China, so like you said, the communist China had sort of opened up their doors and let more folks go out and go to college over here. And that's it's really kind of a, a more recent phenomena. So before that, uh, it was a lot more normal. And, and frankly, most of my friends when I was growing up that were from whose parents were from Asia, um, if they were from like the area around China, they were either from Taiwan or Hong Kong, which were, you know, not not communist, but yeah, that's been the big the big change. And and actually, interestingly, she went on vacation from one area that had a lot of um, let's say Asian investment and Chinese investment to another part of North America, which is downtown LA, where downtown LA is actually seeing very similar patterns in terms of um, just very strong investment from, like you said, uh, people from the mainland mm. who have suddenly you know made it rich, struck it rich and, and, you know, are, are diversifying their assets and, of and course. traveling. Yeah. So, so, so I guess, you know, that's one interesting thing about thing about downtown and, and we'll get into it when I talk about kind of the, the pros and cons of coming to the downtown LA to, to have a vacation is that when I was growing up, I could probably count on like one hand, the number of times I'd been downtown. It was a pretty rough and dangerous place. And, and in some ways it still is, but it's also a place that's seeing, a lot of investment and has actually seen a big turnaround financially in terms of like actually being a trendy place to live now. Like, in fact, my sister, who's an architect, she lives downtown right now. Right. Um. Just the asset that you've sent me before we started recording the episode. This is crimemapping.com. And I have set it uh, to show uh, the Stay on Main Hotel, formerly known as Cecil Hotel, where um, Elisa was staying at the time of her death. Um, And as of uh, today, as of the 16th of February 2020, we can already see that, you know, there has crimes are happening all the time around this place, you know, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And oh, (laughs) this is just LA, I guess, but um uh, la has a lot of crime it seems but you know we can see that there is like some sort of essentially assaults happening around we have um larceny i'm not really sure what that means we have burglaries we also have uh, robberies so it does seem like a place where you know just around the block you could get mugged or robbed it's a dangerous place to stay for a vacation. Yeah, actually, when I so when I I used to work uh, just even this past year, I was working just down to the other side of Seventh um, Street, so the other side of Skid Row from this, and like there were homicides all the time. Like literally, literally, I'd be at work and I'd get a little notice on my phone, and like, oh, someone just got shot and killed like half a block away. So goddamn. Yeah, it just I think I think, I think actually we, we've probably caught it in sort of a, a low crime 
lull right now compared to some other type, times of year. And, and mind you, this is a place that's like an amazing mixture of both the new and old and of, you know, like the really wealthy and the extremely poor. So um, it, it, the, the other thing that's kind of worth calling out is Los Angeles, at least in the form it is now, is not like a really old city. So like, I, I mean, f especially compared to Europe, of course, where Europe has has like at this point, like a couple thousand years of you know, <laughs> metropolitan living, yeah, and yeah, yeah and, then, and then even even in the U.S., you have cities like New York that are fairly old, that are a few hundred years old, or or Chicago that's like you know, Chicago's a, a couple hundred years old. Los Angeles always was constrained by not having enough water uh, until really the past eh, 80, 90 years. Um, so, you know, this building that we're looking at, Hotel Cecil. It's definitely one of the older buildings in the, in the city. This is it's, it's kind of interesting that you still have downtown these buildings that are from like the 20s. Um, you know, when they essentially when they these buildings date back to when you know te when the technology first started existing to even right. be able to build buildings that high. Right. So this is yeah. So this is like probably right at the start of like the you know, uh, the development of downtown LA essentially, right? Like, uh, this is like, yeah, this, this, this building really got built at a time when LA was expanding e essentially. So, right. So, uh, let's move along with the story. So she decides to take a vacation, right? So she goes all the way from, um, she goes all the way from Vancouver, Canada, where she was, you know, she grew up essentially, um, to, downtown LA so she made a few trips right uh, while she was uh, arriving to this area she actually went to the zoo in San Diego if I'm not mistaken right yeah yeah it, it looks like her planning I mean I, I really have to hand it to her for somebody that was gonna use public transportation and and like Los Angeles Amtrak. is not really yeah Amtrak's and trains and stuff like I guess she went to the right place if you were gonna use trains it's worth pointing out that the U.S. in general, but especially the West Coast. Um, I mean, Los Angeles is not really a good public transportation city, with some exceptions. It's getting better than it used to be, but to some extent, um, there's actually a song, a popular 80s song called "Nobody Walks in L.A." Um, <laughs> <laughs> because, because it, 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 up until you know, back then, especially, it was really hard to do so. I mean, there were only buses. It's only in the past. I would say maybe 10, 15 years that we've had really good like subway to train connections. But yeah, she she picked the right place because where, where she was staying, she was fairly near um, the subway and Union Station. And yeah, so, so she was able actually to get up and down it seems like the coast it, a little bit. It seems yeah. like it's in the heart of the city, essentially. Yeah, there's so just kind of to the northeast of her. Staple Center. Yeah, Staple Center. Yeah. That's right. Staple Center. I, I used to work right by that, um, and then I, I also worked to the other side of of Seventh Street there. But yeah, there's a there's a train station called Union Station, which is sort of like our main train station, and then the Amtrak, both Amtrak and um, the MetroLink trains go through there. So yes, what's what's cool is she picked the right place if she wanted to like kind of hop back and forth without renting a car to go to San Diego. It seems so, like a very smart person to do that, you know? Logistically, yeah, yeah. she was uh, intact. She knew what she yeah, was doing. Yeah, she, she was on top of things, at least in terms of that. So, yeah, so she went, you know, she did. it looks like she was using the hotel as her base camp. Um, and, you know, she was she was kind of hopping up and down the coast a little bit and doing these day trips and blogging. And she would call her parents every day. The one thing I thought was interesting was... Um, We'll get into this when we talk about her mental condition, but apparently when she first got there, probably for budget reasons, she was sharing a room with some other people. They had like like a shared That's, room. And that they, was very interesting. Um, yeah. Like I could, right, like at first I actually, when I was doing the research for the longest time, I, I got the information mixed up because I read that she was not traveling alone and she was staying with her roommates. And then when they complained because of her strange behavior, I was like, wait this this doesn't add up you know what i'm saying so then i actually got back and i uh you know redid the initial part of my research and yeah she was apparently staying maybe for for budget reasons with like other people at like the same hotel room so that's 
I mean, that's the first time I've heard of like things like that, you know, where you like share a room. So what I what I was thinking is, especially because it's an older hotel and it's, it seemed like it was kind of oriented towards. But it's like really big. Travel. It seems like you could not get filled up, at least in my opinion. Like they should have free rooms at all at all times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing about Los Angeles. So uh, over here in the West Coast, because we're we're a big tourist destination, so it's like this for us and um, San Diego and San Francisco, like. Hotel rooms can go as high as six hundred dollars a night for even just a very, a very basic hotel room, even, even in the, the middle. Cecil? Well, so that's so the, the Cecil would be an exception, but yeah, even even so, because you have so much commerce and you have so much tourist stuff going on, and you have people that are looking for a bargain. So when you're when you're this close to the ocean, that's that's what really dictates. Like even though it's not that close to the ocean, it's still you know. I mean, I'd stay miles. here. Or like just a quick uh, note, I, I'd stay here. Like if I could just. Oh, yeah. live in LA for for a week that would be like a, a dream come true for me you know what I'm saying so I, I'd stay here like this looks like a really nice place well, well, I mean yeah from, I mean, from the so, outside but but by LA standards it's kind of like an old creaky looking hotel but from the, the inside, inside it looks the, great the inside yeah. lobby looks amazing it looks like a, a, a you know like a Hilton essentially yeah yeah, it definitely. It looks like they had a bit of a facelift. I bet you, if we if we took a time machine and went twenty years back, it probably looked pretty bad inside. But they they they've done some improvements for sure. I think with the rising economy and the burst of tourism, I would say that it sounds like she was almost staying in it like youth hostel style. If that makes sense. Yeah, I know about those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's I think, fairly popular here in, here in Europe. Oh, yeah. Those types of things. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, not as much here to some extent than it is, but yeah, I, I think that's that's what I almost think is like the way she was staying in a room that was kind of set up that way. Now, what it, what it, I couldn't find, I was trying to figure out what what it was that she was exactly doing that was bothering her roommates. Yeah, um, like what it, could that have been? This is, I feel like, such yeah. an important, such an important aspect of this case that you know, so, right before she died, she was somehow uh you know doing some sort of inappropriate actions or something like that yeah. bothering her roommates but no one disclosed this information so maybe someone in the comments can shed like some light on this uh part of the story because i think it's like super important and i don't know why this this has not been like delved into deeper you know yeah it's like it's almost like i don't know if it's out of like respect for the dead or something but it would be pretty relevant because of course like it would. like give, Given given what happened, right? Like like, it could be was she, was she just getting up at night too much and, and and rummaging around, or was she doing things that seem like psychosis? You know what I mean? Was it was it like like she was talking to people that weren't there? Like I, I wish I wish we knew because I think it would help explain of course, it one way like, or another. It, ex right? it would explain a lot of things if if she was actually acting like psychotic or or something like that. That would explain yeah. a lot. But you know, just looking at her pictures. I can tell that she was, for you know, most of the time, she was probably a really nice person to be around. But maybe, upbeat, yeah. yeah. The, the, well, well, so that, so that's that's a good good transition. So, um, and and we say this not to, of course, stigmatize anybody with mental conditions. So, like, we're gonna talk about mental health in this show. We're gonna talk about mental medication. Uh, you know, uh, uh psychiatric medications yeah. like anti antidepressants, SSRIs, and. You know, it's it's important to, to like I said, to do a little disclaimer that we're not trying to stigmatize anybody or make light of this. Um, of certainly, not. it's not it's not it's not uncommon for people to have psychological issues. It's not uncommon for people to be on medications. I think it is important to try to dive deep into it because it, it does seem to have a certain bearing on this case, and even for the whole reason why she was on this vacation in the first place. So, uh, if we take a little, if we re rewind the story a little bit. Um, it's interesting that she seems to have not been very satisfied with her life, even though, it, you know, I think on, on, on paper, it seems like she probably had a pretty nice middle class life. You know, like, like you said, it, it, a lot of people would love maybe to be living even, in North, North maybe America. Maybe even better right? than the middle class. I mean, her parents owned yeah. a restaurant. That's like, I'd say that's like probably even, you know, that's a business essentially. So. They were yeah. probably had had a good amount of money. She and yeah, she was she, she was going to a university. Um, you know, she's living in North America, and like to your point, a lot of people would would love to be just living in North America, having that kind of you know disposable income. So yeah, but I think 
for, for reasons I think we'll, we'll kind of break down later, she seemed to, to have been dissatisfied with what she was doing with her life, even though she was so young. I mean, she was only 21 at this point. She had this, and, and maybe this is, some of this was a, was a byproduct of um, what it looks like. She was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And by, by bipolar disorder, we mean somebody that potentially has um, some kind of cycling of emotions. It could be very rapid, and that's um, pretty devastating for some of those some of the folks that have bipolar disorder that are like constantly happy and sad and happy and sad but it could be more more it, right. it could be a longer cycle you know what i mean where you're you're happy and then you're manic I and guess. then you do things when you're uh, manic just, i guess yeah. just to read off from the wikipedia the you know the quick in uh, i guess overview of what it is so um Bipolar disorder, previously known as manic depression, is a mental disorder that causes periods of depression and abnormality, uh, ab abnormally elevated moods. If the elevated mood is severe, as associated with psychosis, it is called mania. If it's less severe, it's called hypomania. So during mania, an individual behaves and feels abnormally energetic, happy, or irritable individuals often make poorly thought out decisions with little regard to the consequences the need for sleep is usually reduced during manic phases which you know could be probably the one of the things that their roommates complained about during periods of depression there may be crying a negative outlook on life a poor eye contact with others the risk of suicide among those with the illness is high at greater than 6% over 20 years, while while self-harm occurs in 30-40%. to 40%. Other mental health issues such as anxiety disorders are, or, and substance use disorder are commonly associated with bipolar disorder. So just reading this, you know, this just a gives a lot of, you know, ideas regarding this case immediately, right? Yeah, that, that actually is, is an excellent description that you just gave. I think that, that probably summarizes everything in terms of, yeah, the risks. And I, I've even heard, I've heard other, other estimates that of as, as high as 50% of bipolar people uh, potentially kill, uh, 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 attempt suicide. So, yeah, um, yeah imagine, imagine how hard it is, you know, the challenges that you have with someone with, with with a condition like that to have personal relationships to be in a relationship like like a romantic relationship it's it's challenging for both sides right it's challenging for that person especially like it's like like you described if they if they may do things that turn out to be embarrassing or disruptive to their relationships or their job it's hard to hold a job sometimes but yeah so so i think that's you know it, and it's also worth mentioning that she was prescribed i assume by her doctor four different medications which which I, I i dug into so the the medications are are, are pretty pretty common um well well butrin lambus lambus lamictal i guess mm -hmm. that's how you say it uh seroquel and effexor uh to treat her disorders um and all these medications have different side effects now what i'm not clear on i, I would love to hear from our from our listeners is how common it is to have four of those prescribed now At one of those yeah, for those, especially because there there are some issues with having um, so these are at least a couple of these are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So there's a danger at some point that you could actually have too much serotonin in your brain, which which you know I'll, I'll go into later on. But it's called serotonin syndrome. Um, I just I know that and I know one of these is meant to be taken with with another one. I went when I looked it up on Wikipedia, but. The fact that she was taking four of these At the kind same of reasonable. Time. Yeah, seems yeah. like a lot of seems like a lot of uh, prescription drugs uh, to yeah, be taken like, at the same time. Yeah, like like it makes makes you wonder if 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 a, a doctor was just throwing medications at the problem, or if there was more than one doctor. I don't know. It, it, it I guess given that I'm a little alarmed that she was off on her own on a vacation because a it sounds like the bunch of drugs and 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 if if the mental issue was really that severe. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if, if it would have been nice for someone else to go with her at least to help her kind of like to, to kind of keep to have an independent eye. Of course. I guess, of course. On what was going on. So. So, yeah. So. So, you know, that, that being said, this may have been why she felt like she needed to go on this trip, but she felt like she was kind of wasting her life. And she'd actually started uh, another term at university. And I guess 
at one point, so is it the family's a little bit closed lipped about this, but it looks like she may have like disappeared for a while at one point in her life, and there was there was some disruption that they weren't. Hmm, I haven't heard and, about this. Yeah, there was there was something where where uh, she she may have had some major let's say depressive episode. She something she had, where she had started a few plugs right um, at around two thousand and ten it seems. Yeah, yeah. Well, so so that and that that would match up with the, the manic behavior. Yeah. So she'd go back and forth where she'd go and she she would do the normal university thing that people her age do, and then she I think ran into a depressive episode. Which was making her pull out of some courses, and then, um, yeah, to your point, she was very so very involved in social media. I think that she she felt like that was what someone her age was supposed to be doing was that right. that you know that the, so, this, this, this was the era of the blog, right? right. So, so so this is like the, yeah. her first blog. Uh, she did it on blogspot.com, and it was called Etherfield. And you know, from the script that you've made, which is an excellent script, by the way. Uh, I can see that she started this one, this particular blog in mid 2010, so around three years uh, prior to her death. And we can see the last entry uh, is that uh, I am much more active on Tumblr. This is going to stay as a reminder of what I was thinking. So you know, she then created a second blog. I'm gonna uh, show it a little bit uh, later on. Uh, yeah, so um, the the entries in this blog are pretty, pretty, I guess, sad. Um, one of her entries says, uh, "Worries of a twenty-something. I spent about two days in bed hating myself." So this was on Sunday. You know, that's a pretty sad thing to read. She has, you know, multiple posts. Um, right. So pictures on, of some of these posts are no longer here, but then. There are pictures of like um, fashion because she was really into fashion, and most of these like blogs were like uh, fashion oriented. And then she was giving her like thoughts about like um, you know on herself. I, I guess she was talking a, a little bit about her depression and other things. Uh, why, uh, you know besides the fashion thing. So you know she made a lot of entries and so yeah, this was her first blog post. Oh yeah, this this is like a. a the one I've seen, it's uh, the, the image I've seen, you know, stop it, stop being sad right now, stop, like, you know, this, I guess, describes perfectly her situation, you know, when someone has depression, uh, you can't just, like, uh, tell them to, like, stop being sad, you know, that that's not how, how, how depression works, so, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's really, really unfortunate to uh, go through this blog, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, I think that, that, that drawing is actually, like, a perfect... From what I, from what how I've heard it described, I mean, all of us I think have periods in our lives where, where there's just sometimes there's actually good reasons to be depressed, especially if there's stuff going on in your of life. Course, like, like sometimes, like a, sometimes it's, it's just natural. It just happens. Yeah, I mean, it, it, job loss or death in the family or something like that. That's exactly. it's, it's very normal. But but yeah, for for people with like clinical like severe depression, it's something that's just flattening. Like like it's not even logic based. It's not like oh. This thing happened to me. It, it really is something that's like clinical that, that is striking them down and and just sucks all the energy out of them. So like yeah, case in point, like I said, two two days in bed hating herself sounds very much like a major depressive episode. Exactly. And that you know you can't. It, it's it's hard to be a college student or hold a job when you're when you're dealing with that. So it's, it's, it's eh. impossible. It's like it's 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 really really a difficult thing to do. Right. And then, and then, just just as a quick side note, I have to wonder, like, of course, Im imagine being her parents or her parents, like, if the, if they don't have this going on with them, like, do they really want to hear about it? You know what I mean? Like, like they're busy running a restaurant. When you're running a restaurant, that's, that's a seven day a week job. Oh, that's, that's, that's yeah, it never yeah. stops, and it's, like, and it's not even like uh, in uh, a, a a nine to five. It's like uh, what? It's like a it's, <laughs> it's like, like a, a nine to twelve. Nine to twelve or like nine 12 to like at night, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's every day. So that's. That's like some serious uh, work right there, right? Um, yeah. So another thing, you know, we're gonna have to show here. This is her second blog. Um, I'm not gonna pronounce the name because it's probably French, and you know, <laughs> I've mentioned this before. We started <laughs> recording. I have no idea how to pronounce this. It's probably. I wanna say Nouvelle Nouveau. Yeah, sounds sounds French. The way you put it, the way I put it, sounded like 
gibberish so i'm not gonna even <laughs> say say how i think it, it was spelled um right so we can go to the archive you know um once again fashion uh fashion gifs she would have loved instagram you know if she lived oh, that yeah. long she for it she, she, she probably could have been like uh she probably had a sizable amount of followers at this point you know maybe yeah. even made a career, career out of this so it's definitely sad to see you know uh a person with like potential to have died in such a uh, mysterious ways you know uh the interesting fact uh some other people uh, mentioned uh she has she hasn't really been posting pictures of herself so, but I guess that's that's what you do on blogs, you know, you don't post about yourself, that's not like, you know, it's like a team-based, I guess, uh, team-based uh, thing to do, like you have a team and you write on that blog or around that certain team. Uh, but yeah, the, the other thing is that there, she was not like taking, at least some people that, you know, during my research, I came across a lot of people uh, emphasized the fact that she did not post a lot of pictures of herself. But, you know, um, and obviously why did, why I mentioned this is because if you get into the conspiracy theory uh, part of the story, there's a lot of people thinking that uh, Elisa Lam, I'm, I'm not going to say a lot of people, but there are definitely people that think that this has been a some sort of a cover-up by the government, that Elisa Lam actually never existed. And, uh, you know, because some sort of a toxicology report that came after uh, her death was called uh, Lam Elisa, you know, so it's like, um, it's like this, a lot of like uh, interesting uh, name, similar name occurrences in, in, in this case were happening and maybe the government is like throwing red flags at the public or something like that just to uh, I don't know for what reason you would do that, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theory expert at this point, but yeah, so there's a lot of people thinking that the fact that there is not a lot of pictures of herself being posted online, you know, uh, that she may have never even existed, but I guess we will cover that a little bit later on or maybe in a follow-up episode because I, I i believe that this was a real case with a real person you know just just give just throwing that information out for people that don't know about like the conspiracies well it certainly feels weird in the selfie era for someone not to be taking a lot of selfies um yeah so it is it is pretty interesting i, I am trying to remember she did oh no you know when she disappeared there were Plenty, plenty enough smartphones. So yeah, it is interesting that she was a little bit bashful about taking her own but, photo. But it would means, correlate with, yeah. with a person who, you know, uh, as she said by herself, you know, uh, stays in bed for two days, hating herself. You know, you would not be taking a whole bunch of <laughs> selfies, selfies, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, sad in bed. So, um, you know, what, so what happens is, you know, she's she's doing a lot of traveling, and as, as we mentioned, you know, she's right there by Skid Row in Los Angeles. That street right there by her is 7th Street. So that's, that's like, if you ever go there, it's it's pretty sad. It's just a, a, a big, long street of just... Is it really like, 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 like tents all over the place? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just wall to wall. I mean, and it's not the only part of L.A., of course, but I mean, there's there's plenty of people. Unfortunately, the, uh, the United States is having a big ho homelessness crisis right now. So there's people living in tents, like like under like freeway overpasses and like in the bushes and is, all sorts of is, stuff. Is, uh, is the amount of tents increasing, decreasing? Is it staying? Yeah, in the no, same... there's, there's there's more. I think I feel like there's more compared to when I was a a kid. Yeah, so there's Seventh Street, especially so right by right by the hotel. It's it's, it's such a weird thing. So you have you know, a couple blocks away, some of the most expensive, expensive real estate in Los Angeles, and then in, right in, there you in, have in in U.S. essentially. Yeah, in the U.S. Yeah, it's true, right? Except for like maybe New York or something, and yeah. then yeah, like or, or San Francisco, which San Francisco also has a lot of homeless. Um, but yeah, so then then there's the street Seventh Street that's just like wall to wall tents and people wandering around just like that. People, you know, defecating on the street. The, uh, like Southern the Southern California. Zone. It, it is like like complete with diseases like hepatitis. Like there's been a big problem with, um, you know, because people are are, are defecating, but urinating all over the place. I, I don't get the, the the thing is like 
if you're if if you're gonna be homeless for a certain period of time, why why would you not go go and be homeless night in Skid Row? You know what I'm saying? Like well, somewhere um, nicer. I think some of it is so uh, some 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 good percentage of these people are are, are addicted to drugs. So sometimes ah, it's that. Course, sometimes it's course. just mobility. I mean, I used to see when I when I, well, the first time I worked downtown. There was this one guy that I would see in a wheelchair with one leg every day. Every day I'd see this guy and say hi. And actually, I remember when I left, I gave him a gift um, when I when I left that job, just to, you know, send him off. And he was like probably one of the better off homeless people in the area. Um, but there's there's some of these people are just crazy. They're just they're they're just mentally ill and uh, unfortunately addicted to drugs. And obviously, you know, there there's yeah, probably, you could get just, you you could ask for like every every other person probably has drugs on them. In Skid Row. Yeah, and then the, here's the other thing: is like if you go someplace else, like even though there's a lot of violence and stuff going on, if you suppose like there's some some of them are like moved down to like Santa Monica by the beach, and you know there's a whole other set of challenges. There's you know if you go someplace else, you might have to worry about gangs. Right, it's like gangs a, it's like a, it's like a community down there of like people that are in the similar position, and you know they they know that yes. like if they stay crowded up, they, they're they're better off than they're, you know, probably by yeah, by yeah. themselves somewhere, you know, b- people, up people, like below the bridge or something like that. Exactly. You get, you, you know, people just tend tend to find their comfort level, and yeah. yeah, to your point, you know, maybe maybe you can actually depend on someone to watch your back in this campsite, but not if you move, then maybe you're, you're worried about people taking your stuff again and victimizing you. And and you know, people do. Like I, I was reading a couple different stories, researching this of just, you know, like like even in a park near me, uh, some homeless guy that was sleeping on a on a on a picnic table, yeah. someone stabbed him in the stomach in the middle of the night, just just randomly, just just for for no reason. Crazy. So, yeah. Crazy. So, so um, it's it's an interesting reason. Uh, I mean, it's an interesting place uh, to I guess go for a vacation, but I guess at least yeah. uh, picked uh, this certain area because you know the Cecil had fairly affordable rates for a student, and yeah, you know, yeah, that's, that's why uh, it it seems like a it's essentially it seems like a smart thing to do, um, just because of the. Well, how cheap how you know cheap the housing was probably at the hotel but maybe she did not completely research the area that the cecil was located in because you know f- from like a, a an outsider perspective you know i'm not uh, a u.s national i'm from europe let's say i was traveling to la uh, and i was like on booking.com and i was looking at like i guess cheap hotels like if I saw the Cecil and I saw the rates and the rates were nice, I would book the flight and I would, you know, not do the research of like, oh, sh- oh crap, now I'm like in the middle of Skid Row, you know, for for a week, like I, yeah. I, I would not do that research myself. So you know, I cannot judge Elisa for doing that. She probably was thinking that LA is LA everywhere, you know. But you know, clearly yeah, that's yeah. not the point. But but only people from LA can know this information. You know, like us outsiders, we we just go to LA, you know, to to, to see the sights. We we don't really know the the, the you know the ins and outs of, of the city. Yeah, I just yeah, like like I think it's a good point. I, I mean, it's just LA is one of those cities that's just a little bit weirder than the other cities in terms of just how the thing how the way things are laid out and 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 the fact that public transportation is not so great and and yeah just just the really strangeness of, of having like this army of homeless people right next to like you know high high price hotels and high rises so so yeah so so lisa was supposed to check out of that hotel on january 31st 2013 and uh go up north to santa cruz um, which is on, on on the way to San Francisco, mm-hmm. um, and and she she missed her her call to her parents, so that right away they get they get worried because she didn't ever miss her call to her parents. She was, she was and, contacting her parents every day, from what I've researched, yeah. and then on this one particular day she did not contact them, so the parents were immediately not not I would say distressed, but uneasy. Yeah, yeah, and in fact, it sounds like they. They didn't mess around. Like they flew flew down right away, and maybe uh, that's so th- because they knew about what type of person Elise actually was. That she yeah. had some sort of, you know, she was at risk. Issues. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it was it was a warning sign to them, and they just 
you know, but when, once again, it shows probably they had some some level of wealth that they could do that so quickly because it's not a cheap flight from Vancouver to L.A. For the but yeah, Daylight, so yeah, that's that's probably a bunch of a bunch of money to do that. So, so, so the good news was, um, if there was any good news, the good news was that the hotel had staff had seen her that day. Um, she was alone. Now, one of the interesting quotes I see here is that, um, you know, there was there was a manager of a nearby bookstore who had who had encountered her. She probably came in to go shopping, and it, it sounded like she was in the middle of a, a, a pretty manic state. So, by manic, I mean you know high energy, like you, you like you, you described, high energy. Yeah. potentially happy or at least stimulated. It says, the quote is, she was outgoing, very lively, very friendly. Um, at the bookstore, right? At the bookstore, yeah. And she was just kind of kind of looking for a book and talking about whether the book was going to be too heavy for her to carry. I mean, well, you know, it's just a smart, smart woman, um, a smart, yes. smart traveler. Right, I have the yeah. book, bookstore right here. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so it was called The Last Bookstore, right? So um, it seems like all of these uh you know all of these uh buildings right here they seem so fancy and you know it's definitely not not some uh place where you would expect an army of you know essentially homeless people to be located at but yeah 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 and they so they you know the cops start start searching and and you know it, it, like I, I think we've we've alluded to some of the the legal constraints uh in this country before but you know one of them is this is this is enshrined in our constitution uh, our, our bill of rights is that um police can't just go busting and searching wherever they want so um for you know if if unless the hotel it, even if the hotel was like oh you can search every room like like the person that rents that room has some rights as well so so they couldn't just go searching every every room in the hotel right away violating everybody's privacy um, not that they were necessarily going to do that anyway, but yeah, they, they, they tried to do some investigating, but you know, they, they could only poke around so much and they didn't really have reason to believe that anybody had like necessarily abducted her, mm -hmm. especially given, I guess, some of the, the questions we have about her mental state and her, her medical history. Oh, yeah. Um, so there, so they, yeah, they, so that being said, I mean, the police did take it seriously, unlike some of the other cases that you and I have covered, which seems like the police departments didn't really. And actually, I, th I think that's actually pretty impressive. I, I hear this all the time. So here in L.A., um, I will say that L.A. is pretty good about when someone says, oh, my, my elderly mother who has Alzheimer's, like, wandered off from the house. The police take that really seriously, like, like the, uh, unlike, unlike mm. other places maybe. Like, like, it's not unusual to have, like – Mm -hmm. on the news yeah. or, or a local yeah like on next door or something on, on our on kind of our different crime apps right our neighborhood watch apps like like hey help us find this poor kudos kudos to the police you yeah know? yeah Definitely. yeah i mean i mean because and, and this this isn't a massive city where there's a lot of people that have mental issues you know or or you know it'll be like a teenager of course, of course. who's autistic or something yeah so so yeah, yeah so they, 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 a, a quick yeah. a quick little uh, brief uh, thing that i found on the internet while you were describing uh, that uh I'm not sure how credible this is, but this could be the room that she was staying in. At least this is what like my little uh, research efforts for the last 15 seconds have uh, resulted in. And yeah, so uh, this looks like an inside of a Cecil hotel. So now we can see a shift from that nice lobby to like a little bit of a rundown, beat down uh, room, you know, it's maybe this I'm, I'm not sure how credible this image is but this is the first image that comes up and it's interesting yeah i mean these are all going to be old rooms and of yeah for, for for whatever facelift it has but you know i, I have to say though it you know it, especially in big cities like this in, in in new york a room like that it would not be unusual and you'd be paying a of lot course, of money of course yeah new, well, everyone so, knows yeah. that about new york but you know that it is what it is right so she doesn't call her parents essentially and right um i'm not sure if, if you're moving too fast a little bit into the story but you know um there has uh you know like uh i'm not sh certain but i believe like a week after she disappeared the police actually released a cctv uh footage right um are we mo moving a little bit too fast into the story no or? no that's perfect this is a perfect time for it yeah. okay yeah so um this thing I'm pretty sure everyone has seen this. That is what, like, this is not going to be a shocker for anyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly certain. Let me just grab it. 
Right, so this is not gonna be a shocker for uh, any of our audience. You know, we can talk while we watch it, but we can now see the fa famous Elisa Lam footage. So everyone knows at this point about this uh, footage. It's um, it's it's essentially pr probably I'd say top five, <laughs> probably top top two, top probably top one elevator CCTV footages of all time. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a a really really famous uh, piece of uh, recordings from the CCTV, and this is basically Elisa Lam uh, on the day of her death. She is uh, acting um, in an interesting manner, to say the least. You know, we can see her right now just, you know, taking a glance outside of the elevator. Um, okay, so f the first thing, uh, because the, the, the video has moved a little bit uh, uh, too far, the first thing that she does when she enters, she seems like she entered in a normal manner. Now this right here does not look like a normal manner to, to use the elevator bent down and it seems that she mashed a whole bunch of buttons like I don't know how elevators work in the US but uh, where I'm from you usually don't have to you know <laughs> do, do this you, you don't do this usually in the elevators so you know what do you make of this I mean the only, only thing I think of is I know in one of those pictures she was wearing glasses so I'm wondering if if she forgot her glasses and she had to kind of I mean yeah it, it does look like she's the, the other thing I was thinking is if you're hallucinating like um, you know people that are on shrooms uh, where their, their visuals of course are, are, yeah. are, are getting disrupted yeah I, I could see that where like or, or you know or, or if you're really drunk or if you're really high I could see it being where, where you you know you have to like kind of <laughs> extra concentrate so that's the only thing but yeah I mean it's 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 pretty odd behavior and then and then Very like I, then, then people people describe the rest of it as Sometimes it looks like she's hiding, but then she looks like she's not hiding. So it's, it looks like she's. Kind of, doesn't it look at the, yeah. at this at this particular particular point of the footage? Doesn't it look to you that she's actually talking to someone outside of the elevator that the cap the camera cannot capture because of the angle? Yeah, or 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 because they're not there and she's just talking to the could air. Be. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, could be. Yeah, she's she's because she was sticking her head out and doing weird stuff, and then it was weird because it, it, at first it looked like she was trying to avoid somebody, and she kind of hides in that corner. <laughs> And then, but then, then she's like, you know, like, you're not doing a good. What, and then, what, then what was I think that? that what, part, what was that? What, what is that this? Weird. What, that, what are that these hand signs? You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of when someone says a, a an inappropriate joke to you, and you're like, <laughs> ah, okay, get away from me, something like that, you know? So, then yeah. She returns the, back. She presses. Oh, this is you know. Just, just you, you need to clarify it to me because I'm not from the U.S. This is not how. Well, yeah. This is not how elevators work in in L.A. Right? We have the same elevator technology, I assume. <laughs> yeah, even though it's it's an old hotel, I'm assuming the elevator was was Probably renovated. Done. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, nice. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't have that weird like great. What you is have, this? See, what, what, uh -huh, so that. So yeah, I was I was reading in the research that like apparently this is like one of the most popular videos in China. I mean, to me, it, her hand motions are really weird. So that, I think that's to me, you know, for all this, the theories about her hiding from somebody and trying to avoid to somebody, this looks like somebody who's not in their right mind or under the influence of something. Yeah, like what what this this you know this and you know you know you know I'm gonna say something right now like when you go into the elevators you know you i tend to do like some 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 things some funny things that i would not probably do if i'm like uh, with someone else in the elevator you know you probably like i don't know like um you know like whistle around or like shake yeah. your hands or, or s some regular stuff but like you never do this right you never do this no this is this is and she's, she's still doing that in the lobby right now like she's, she's doing not this even... in the lobby right yeah and, and then the fact that she's hitting all those buttons like that that almost. Uh, by the way, I gotta ask. Okay. Why the hell? Why is the why is the elevator not moving? Exactly. She hit like, she hit like forty buttons and elevators. Is the elevator also crazy? Like the elevator is also. What, what is happening <laughs> here? What is yeah. happening here? Why is the elevator oh. not moving? This was a big, oh. big theory. Did, did oh, you, you know just what? did you did you yeah, just solve yeah. the mystery? No, uh, maybe. So, um, I know downtown because oh, especially in hotels. Uh, especially if, if you're worried about, like, let's say, some of those oh, and, homeless and people. And now it's closed, yeah. 
from so if you're worried about some of those homeless people from Seventh Street walking into the hotel and just you know taking a crap in your hallway uh, on like on like floor twenty. So a lot of hotels and high rises in the area they have key cards. So you need to you need to actually put in your hotel key into a little slot mm. or beep it against it, and then you can go to your room. Right. Another thing uh, before we you know uh, stop watching this uh, footage is. If we look at this time timestamp area right here, it's all messed up, and it should not be messed up because, from what I've gathered, timestamps are very important in footages, especially in like uh, trials and cases. And there have been uh, instances where you know security footages have been completely disregarded just because of the timestamp being messed up. And this timestamp is completely messed up. Now, some theories around the internet uh, suggest that, you know, uh, some sort of a video file has been changed because maybe the camera was old uh, in this elevator, and you know, for for the video to play on like, uh, you know, like on an MP4 file or something like that, they had to transport the the footage, and that's how the letters got messed up. I I'm not sure about that, but you know, if we would be going around the theory of like uh, some sort of a false flags, uh, conspiracy theories like this, uh, messing up of the timestamp, sort of, uh, you know, also, like, I guess, would give us more ideas, right? So, yeah, the timestamp is completely messed up, and, you know, that that's really, that's not, that's not a good thing. Yeah, and it makes, it makes you wonder uh, if there's any, any reason why that would happen, if, like, you know, sometimes some, um, security cameras will only turn on when there's motion uh, mm. because 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 they just they don't they don't want to write like hours of just nothing going on to it to, to a hard drive um, so they exactly. just they get they get they yeah. get cheap and lazy and they just do it that way but yeah no it is it is weird so so yeah I mean you know I think I think we're getting to the uh, to sort of the the, the, the horrific part so Where, you know she was like found <laughs> right yeah oh, yeah, yeah that but, was well, insane well, yeah so, so the, the part that led up to that was, um, you know, she's been missing for about a week, and yeah. and I remember that I, I I remember following this in the news, and because I was you know I was I was just like in a building down the street, and I would be at work and I'd be browsing the web and stuff, and um, so like some of the guests started complaining about the taste of the water. They're like, the water's black. It's coming out of the faucet, and like it doesn't taste right. Jeez. Like it tastes tastes gross, and and finally, like I guess they must have sent a, a, a worker up there to the to the roof just to use the water tanks. It's interesting they were even using water from water tanks that were like open to the air like that. That's a little bit disturbing itself because mm -hmm. yeah. really, yeah, who, who would have thought that would be? You know, there's like pigeons and stuff flying around all over the place that could be crapping in there. But yeah. um, so so like, and downtown has a lot of pigeons. Uh, so. Yeah, so so they go and they, they go up there and they find her bloated decomposing body inside one of these one of these water tanks. Jeez. And, yeah. Yeah. So that is the body so was gross. naked by the way. The body was naked. Yeah, naked with, with the clothes floating next to it, which yeah, it's pretty fascinating. Now here's here's one thing I, I wonder even before we get to this last part is I wonder with the with if she was doing stuff like that around those roommates, I mean, she was acting pretty out of it in that last video we watched in the elevator. So maybe like, it's not. I, so, I feel like we yeah. would have that information uh, disclosed into the public if that was the case, because it's really strange. Like they strange. would have called the cops, maybe. Right? Yeah, maybe. Maybe yeah. it was something not so severe, but. So it was. It was, it was something. Something leading up to that. So maybe, maybe she was shaking maybe, her hands, or or like, maybe maybe doing some weird stuff, you know. But but yeah, maybe not this. We're acting too manic, but yeah. So maybe it's not so surprising that she disappeared right after this. So I mean, you know, when I look at this and I think about why, why the first thing that comes to my yeah. mind, why is there so many people here? Oh, I mean, well, that's that's L.A. for you. I mean, they're, they're, they're always. I think uh, it, it, what it is is whenever, um, even if even if it's just somebody having a heart attack, yeah. they'll always they'll always have. Um, it's it's kind of a standard. I, I I get why from the outside it looks weird. So no, yeah. Um, when, whenever even just like, if I, if I fell down because I was having a heart attack, mm -hmm. yeah. you would actually see like see like two two fire engines and an ambulance would show up to my house. 
that's just the way it is. It, God, it's, yeah, it's the way, that's, yeah, that's, that's 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 really good at that same time. You know, that's, yeah. that's that's great. Oh my God! Like what? How yeah, many? So, so like, but I'm then, seeing but then like they, four fire trucks. And then they don't want you know like they're really there's there's a lot of litigation and stuff too. Like they don't want anybody to fall down and get hurt. So there's like a guy to hold the ladder and yeah, it's a whole it's a whole <laughs> God, thing. Damn, like this is like Plus, a lot of people. Plus, it's like exciting too. So I think if they don't have anything going on, they're like, "Oh yeah, I want to see that too." Um, yeah. So I mean, some of it's that, but you know, so yeah. So they go and they they they, they find her body, and like you said, they there was it was it was a bunch of weird weird things. So yeah, her body was naked, but her clothes were floating next to it, and the flo- clothes were kind of gritty, which I I kind of wonder. Well, like if you were rummaging around on the roof maybe they'd be gritty because you know there's usually a lot of like you know those little rocks and stuff on the roof like the roofing tile kind of thing oh yeah you know what i mean it's just yeah. dirt and crap you know like like you know 80 years with the crap up there of course yeah. um uh and then they did an autopsy on her um and unfortunately because she's in the water so long um you know that kind of makes it a little harder to get an accurate toxicology report so they didn't really really found because they, they, they didn't they didn't have a, have a lot of her blood mm-hmm. but they found you know her her medication in her blood um some and, alcohol but i've gathered like a really small yeah, amount of alcohol small amount and no other recreational drugs but i'll say in fairness okay it's oft, it's often hard to detect a lot of recreational drugs like there have been some famous cases like the rodney king case mm-hmm. Where it was pretty clear he was on something like PCP, but it never took, turned up in the toxicology right, reports the right. first time. Um, yeah, it's so difficult to, to, to detect these substances, especially after the body has been soaking in water for what has been what like two weeks at that point or something like it, that. Yeah, and, if, and and for some of those drugs, if it's like if it's just like at all designer, if it's a, if it's at all like slightly different yeah. than, than what the exact test and the tests are expensive. So it's like, you don't exactly, you know, no one's no, I'm pretty sure nobody was testing her for like PCP. Nobody was testing her yeah. for like, which is odd because this story was mainstream. I, I think they should probably go all out in terms of testing. Yeah. It, it just, it just gets so expensive. And then, and then they only have a certain amount of, material that they can test so you know they use up some of that material when they when they do the test yeah, um, of course. but it is interesting she said it says here that it non non-prescription drugs such as sinutab and ibuprofen so ibuprofen you know is just a painkiller yeah. and sinutab is a uh, an, an a histamine so yeah i mean they didn't really find anything I, I guess there's there's sort of so then there was a lot of like controversy because they're like well she couldn't have really got up there because the the stairs were locked and that only the staff had access to the passcodes and keys that would have gotten up with the elevator but then uh i think like you and i were talking about yeah, some I other have, I, yeah. have, <laughs> I have the the footage right here that yeah. pretty much the you know debunks that debunks theory that. some yeah. guy just casually walked over um to the you know to the place where elisa was found like and just you know just took a tour on on the rooftop but i guess for us you know to show everything now a a very interesting part is coming up in the video right so we can see the guys like filming everything he's like um showing the water tanks that uh first of all is that a big ass belly on him or what is that I don't know. This this was like is this like a pregnant man? I don't know. Oh, maybe, 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 oh you know what it is? I, I bet you he was wearing his backpack in his front. Ah, uh, of course. Of people course. do that because because they're worried about someone digging in their backpack right. from behind. Um, yeah. So yeah, so he walks up, you know, uh, he's just showing us around, and then he climbs up on top of the, I guess where where you would actually go to get inside of the uh, the water tanks, right? So these stairs right here, these 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 uh, red stairs and you can see the ladder on the right side um, is what you use to get the top of the uh, rooftop completely just so you could like take a little view of the of the I guess uh, water tanks and right bef- right below this edge you can see the water tanks now this is we just have to discuss this one thing as you can see right here on the top right corner one lid is open now is this lid always open and what is this because 
from you know the theory that Lisa Lam uh, accidentally uh, drowned, you know, essentially, um, which is like the the the, the common theory, I guess. Uh, she is, had to open one of those lids, right? Um, now, question uh, initially: Are these lids always open? Did this guy open the lids before walking up here, or? How do you explain this? Because I, I, I can't explain this. It, it would seem so uh, unsanitized to keep one open, you know. Vigions could yeah. fly in and take a crap in there, so it's like, or, yeah. Or, or die or something. I mean, the one thing I was wondering is, um, I see this a lot of times with like the, the water bottles we use in my house, where they have to have like a little, um, like like a hole in the top so that when you drink out of it, it doesn't develop suction inside so i wonder if it's the same thing where like it's just an issue where they're like oh the stupid water isn't flowing again because a suction got formed because it, it made too good of a seal so maybe oh, maybe I once see, in a while I you know see, what i mean i, I mean there's a knock that thing yeah. yeah maybe yeah so essentially right so this uh video debunks the fact that uh, lisa could not walk up there by herself like and undetected because it's got oh like both of those are open right oh wow yeah, and then and then I'll, I'll you know I guess because because we're we're getting pretty deep into this. I mean, the one thing I'll say is uh, I remember having the same conversation with once again my colleague in Denver. He was like, "Well, you know, how would she have lifted the lid and gotten herself up?" So like some of the same questions that people have about her physical ability to get up there and get into the tank, mm -hmm. like saying, "Oh, she was too frail," or "She was too weak," or. I don't know. Like I said, she, she looked. She, she didn't look very heavy. She looked like she could definitely move herself around. Um, I always think like, well, if someone had killed her, it seems, like, especially what you just showed, it seems way harder than like than like her just jumping down onto that tank or climbing up from the bottom. Like, how would you even? She had to weigh probably what at least 110 pounds. Something how like would, that. How, probably not a lot. Yeah. How could you drag her and then stuff her in there without leaving blood and stuff? You know what I mean? Like, like even to try you, to. I'm gonna give you yeah. a theory. I'm gonna give you a theory yeah. that explains this. Once again, I, like I guess your your end of the research was like more about like the actual, uh, real details of the case, and my end of the research was like theories and and and, and conspiracies. So okay, she is having one of her manic episodes. She's in the elevator. She's having a manic episode. She walks upstairs. She uh, to the rooftop. She runs into sex offenders that have been located at around at Cecil Hotel. I think a few of them at the time that she was uh, staying there. Uh, registered sex offenders were staying there. She runs into one of them. She gets you know killed. And the sex offender dumps her body in the water tank this is just one of the theories that i've read you know i'm not saying that this is what happened this is just a theory so i feel like i have a theory for everything regarding this case because i'm gonna send you the files after the show yeah. we will but, have to do a follow-up episode but, one day but i guess physically how do they how do they even get her body up there and then and you know what i mean like i feel like if if it's not you, you know okay so let, just just imagine this you're like a person and you're you're carrying yourself in your, on the bottoms of your feet, right? So you're not scraping against anything. You're not falling. You're not abrasing your skin. Yeah. Which, of course, of course, her body was pretty decomposed, so we don't really know. But, like, we don't really see you – know, I feel like if you're trying to, like, haul her body around, it would take, like you said, at least one to two people mm. who would be pretty strong. How do you drag her body up the, feet up, up the stairs? There? Yeah. Or, or, yeah, either way, either, either up the stairs or up the ladder. And then how do you drop her in that hole without, like – leaving like a bloody mark where you where you hit the edge or something like that that's the part where i feel like to, to also kind of there, there was like no a, physical yeah. trauma found in the autopsies right right so there's nothing so like we kind of we don't have anybody on camera we don't have anything and then, and then i feel like yeah i mean to, to, for her to fall in there it's almost like a nothing but nothing but net kind of like mm. hole you know what i mean exactly. we're like yeah we're like it's almost like you have to lower yourself in which wow, I, like what a, what a nightmare to do that. But yeah, that's that's what when I look at it, I'm like, it feels like it would be really hard. like suppose I were some kind of horrible, you know, night stalker type guy that was going to kill her, you know, night stalker who who lived there uh, at one point uh, way way earlier. Oh yeah, that, Richard was, Ramirez. Yeah. This guy is uh, just straight up evil. He's probably one of the most evil, you know, uh, murderers of all time. Um, oh yeah, by the way, another guy uh, called, uh, <laughs> we have no idea how to pronounce his name, he's Austrian, Jack 
he's an Austrian with an American name, Jack Unterweger. Weirger, Weirger, yeah, something like that. A, a serial killer was staying there, uh, also not at, at the same time. And then you know, the infamous Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. You know, the the Which... the, the, the the man who did un, 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 unspeakable things. Uh, he essentially was also staying in the, in the same hotel. Uh, you know, during one of his uh, I guess streaks of of, of, of of insanity, right? So. So yeah, yeah. Which, the Cecil, which, which, the Cecil is a, it has a history. Curse right? hotel, um, yeah. I mean, which also shows you how low rent it was back there in the '80s. So you know, it, it's, it, it clearly was some place that was really affordable for to these like, guys to do it. I mean, Richard yeah, Ramirez I mean, probably I mean, had like some money because like from the people that he killed, he was taking stuff. So that's true. Yeah, he did. He did rob some victims, but yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely the area was really economically depressed back then. So I think it was, it was probably not very expensive at all to, exactly. to live there but, yeah. but but it's changed a lot yeah so that's, that's why i always think like suppose you're him suppose you're like a, a big man who has strength even even two big men to try to drag her up <laughs> that ladder or those stairs and then somehow get her into the tank nothing but net so without banging her arm or her leg or her head against anything and without scraping or leaving blood or tissue on the outside of it because you know they don't someone like that wouldn't have had time to come back up with bleach or whatever and try to clean that off you wouldn't think maybe they would but yeah. um that's that's where I, I kind of question so like here's so here's the other theory i had was when i was thinking about this and i was doing all the research into the medications was um look so the medications themselves come with some pretty serious side effects especially okay. when you combine them both of them so i mean on one hand if you do too much of them yeah. You can get into side effects like mania. You can get into side effects like psychosis. Um, mm-hmm. It is, and it's worth mentioning also. People take SSRIs um, to stave off depression, right? Mm-hmm. But, but one of the the kind of interesting and kind of sad things about SSRIs is the first month you start an SSRI. Yeah. Because it actually it actually lowers some of your inhibitions, mm-hmm. you're actually more likely to kill yourself in the Jeez. first month. Jeez. Yeah, because yeah, because because it, it, the, the, the same way it helps you, it can also hurt you. And it's yeah. not this is not 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 me not me being but, anti-SSRI. But, the, but at the same time, j- just a quick interruption once again. Yeah. Uh, I don't think Elisa was on her first month at that no, point. No, 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 she yeah, wasn't. No, course, no, yeah. she, but, because but, of the blogs and shit. Yeah. But, but but there's also some some so here's the other thing is if she ran out for any reason so some of these SSRIs actually have some pretty serious withdrawal effects that can also mm. conceivably get into um, you know um, well, well well interestingly some of the effects either too much or too little had yeah. to do with feeling had to do with feeling overheated so I thought that was interesting As so in... that. Like, like like feeling feeling hot like feeling oh too like hot. actually like literally hot yeah mm. yeah yeah like like like, like oh, feeling, feeling oh, hot. you know oh, what I'm saying oh, oh, oh. so 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 that coupled with here's, oh, here's once my again other... you're the you're the genius investigator <laughs> on, on the show gonna, once again I'm like gonna, oh my I'm god gonna... like, where do you get these like uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna uh, Columbo this one yeah so uh, uh, so then my other thought was yeah because okay. she was taking four of these four of these things yeah and then. Okay, here's the thing. So, like, people mentioned, cause, because especially because the video we watched where she's flapping her hands around and she's talking to people that look like they're not there and seemingly hiding from, from ghosts or, or or hallucinations. Yeah. So people were wondering, like, well, is it possible that she could have taken, like, um, some kind of mind-altering substance? substance? Mm. I mean, it doesn't really seem like weed behavior, but, you know, someone who's on a antidepressant, I've seen people in antidepressants have very weird behavior with alcohol uh no joke i've i I had a roommate a long time ago who um two two different times completely lost his mind with us on alcohol and he didn't and and, and he didn't think he wasn't drunk it was his alcohol reacting with the um the ssri he was on um and he was almost a different human being and he was he was out of it he he told us he was essentially um having a little bit of a psychotic episode uh the second time for sure um thought about jumping out the window etc so yeah so that was, that was that's scary so just think she was on four of those things Jeez. so the fact that she had a little yeah, bit that's alcohol, insane. that makes me wonder if her tolerance is low and the other thing is the, but i will say though to temper that is um i've lived here in la my whole life and yeah. some drugs 
I've I've actually never seen in person anything other than cannabis. So I've never I've never seen cocaine. I've never seen shrooms. I've never seen LSD or Molly. Um, you know, uh, MDMA, etc. Yeah. For sure, for sure, it gets sold here in LA. For sure, people do have access to it, of but course, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You have access to every single drug in, in LA, essentially. Yeah, but like, like I'm just thinking, even though she's down in kind of a major drug marketplace, so exactly. to speak, right? As so like, yeah, around as Skid Row, like, yeah. Yeah, I just, I just feel like as like a tourist that has no friends and no real connections in the city, I don't, I don't really see her getting her hands on like shrooms or acid or anything like that. So, I feel like. What might be happening besides like the, the potential for overdose under medications or withdrawal mm-hmm. under medications and just her own mental health issues, which seem, you know, like she was away from home for a, I, I don't really know if she was ever away from home this long by herself without being monitored. So it's worth pointing out that sometimes when you're, uh, I've, I've seen this ha- also happen before, mm-hmm. sometimes when somebody with yeah. a major mental condition. Uh, goes away from home and, and, and away from familiar surroundings, um, that exacerbates maybe conditions that were sort of hidden under the surface. So that's something to think about. But the one thing that I, I'm kind of columboing in on right now is um, something called serotonin syndrome. So serotonin syndrome is when your body, your brain, sorry, mm-hmm. actually has too much serotonin and mm-hmm. it's potentially fatal. But one of the side effects, so what happens is these SSRIs that she was on and the other medications might have led to a condition where she already was building up too much serotonin in her brain. And then if she did have something else that might also like like a drug or cannabis or even um, there's certain like not even drugs that can exacerbate that and lead you to have too much serotonin. It's a potentially fatal condition, A. Uh, I just want that, to quickly read off uh, yeah. the description because I have uh, yeah. found it. S- serotonin syndrome is a group of symptoms that may occur with the use of certain serotonergic medications or drugs. The degree of symptoms can range from mild to severe. Symptoms include high body temperature, as, as you mentioned before, agitation, increased reflexes, uh, tremor, sweating, d- uh, dilated pupils you know she had not had her uh, eyeglasses I don't know if that colorates in any way uh, and the diarrhea body temperature can increase to greater than 41.1 Celsius which is insanity you're pretty much dying at that point uh, when you when you yeah. have that high uh, temperature and complications may include seizures and ex- uh, extensive muscle breakdown so that's uh, serotonin syndrome for you yeah, which um, it, so I I had to convert the Celsius to Fahrenheit for for uh, Americans. But that's insane. So that's insane. That's like one hundred and six. Uh, yeah, which is probably is, 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 is crazy. It's yeah, it's fatal. Yeah. So, so so my theory was she's starting to wig out here. She's starting to have her have a psychotic episode. I feel like maybe the serotonin syndrome was starting to emerge yeah. at this point because this is earlier in the day. Mm-hmm. She feels overheated. She's not thinking rationally. Yes. She goes and, and, and kind of explores up and she's up on top of that roof and then she's like up there, not in her right mind. Who knows what she's thinking mm-hmm. too. I mean, once again, you know, she could have been thinking about killing herself and while she's up there she goes to the highest point of the building she goes on top of one of those tanks she sticks her arm down that hatch oh there's water in there i'm hot i'm gonna takes off her clothes either in the tank or outside the tank um and then i mean i I don't even know that she could have drowned like she could have just died from the actual syndrome exactly and then or, or or maybe she you know just think about it it's pretty hard to pull yourself back out of a tank like that, even if you could reach back up. Like I don't know how high the lo- the water she, level was. She she could not like uh, from the research that I've gathered, she could not like you see these guys that are standing right now, like yeah, these guys are probably taller than her, and yeah. these guys could probably not get out. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. Who knows who, who knows how high the water level is? And I mean, that's to me that's the saddest part. Is also, imagine if. Yeah, just if just a, there, right? right. Just a quick uh, note here. Uh, she actually somehow had to close the lid because she was found with the lid of the water tank closed so how do you get inside of a uh, the water tank 
and then from the inside of the water tank where you can't even reach uh, the lid essentially how do you close the lid so i guess this is like the biggest the biggest uh, at least one of the biggest i guess uh, holes in the in the theory that this was you know the ac accidental death well, is the fact that the close the lid was actually closed right well I, I just wonder i wonder if it's the same reason so, so two things i can think of one okay. is maybe they open and shut that thing on their own anyway like maybe someone goes up to the roof every day opens it for a little while to to release the suction and then closes it so it could have been that it was open when she got there she gets inside she leaves it open and then she drowns like like she drowns when no one's there to find her someone else comes back up there they're like oh it's open again or here's the other thing what if the air pressure pops it open so then someone has to go and pop it back close so what if it's the opposite that when it fills it builds up on the air pressure and it's tight enough that it, you know the same reason that we caught suction it would pop the top off and then someone every day has to go up there and knock that thing closed again because of the pigeon droppings um could, could be could be like um one of the one of the water tanks has a weird white color around it doesn't look too um uh, sanitary you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah. maybe uh, maybe stuff overflows sometimes Right, so I mean, this this were this was a, an excellent you know theory on your end. Like you did your investigative work really thoroughly this time, and yeah, like oh my god, like I, I had no idea you would come 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 uh, you know with this one, but like this was yeah, like I, you just you know blew my mind essentially. Well, so yeah, I mean that was that was what I was thinking because I, I I really honed in on the medication thing and the fact that she was acting. But it seemed to me, I mean, unless yeah. unless you believe she was seeing ghosts or talking to someone off camera, that whole hand flapping thing, I heard I that like, was yeah, yeah, one of those things which was well, really weird. That's that's the thing with the podcast. I mean, essentially, uh, you know, I feel like we are pretty much like um, on on the you know the last uh, uh, stage of, of of this episode. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say like uh, are we gonna yeah. be covering some some more details? I'm not sure, but like just a quick note, a quick note. I think. This was like the probably the most rational explanation to what happened. You know, obviously your theory was also very very interesting. Like that this was an accidental death. Um, uh, yeah, you know, just seeing this these images uh, once again is definitely crazy. I think in the future we should do a follow up episode just uh, on this case, just to like uh, uh, think about all of the interesting details uh, or all of the interesting theories and conspiracies that you know uh, are surrounded by by this case because they are, i'm sure we're gonna get comments on this episode with people coming at with like a lot of interesting information at us and you know we should definitely do a follow-up episode uh where we you know just discuss the details where we no longer have to you know introduce the the topics uh, the right. topic and, and our own opinions on it but just a, a straight up jump into the details so yeah um yeah, uh, so I, I had just one, one kind of final thought on, on the whole thing. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, I think we, as we alluded to, it's interesting because she seems like some of her behavior was sort of driven around maybe what the kind of messages that she was getting from, from our culture here about social media and how you have to be out there and active. And I think, I mean, you know, yeah. given the challenges she had in her life, it's a little bit sad because I feel like she had set a bar that was a little bit too high for herself like she was so young she had so much to look forward to in her life she had some big challenges but i think she was really hard on herself even with with you know the things that were going on for herself like she felt like she needed to be at a level that i think wasn't realistic for someone that's only 21 i mean she had her whole life ahead of her she had a lot of time in theory to kind of figure herself out and get through some of her issues so for her to feel like she was wasting her life is i mean it's it, it it would be laughable if it wasn't sad for what happened to her um yeah because yeah, clearly she had, she had a lot to offer the, yeah. the world she was right? only, yeah she was only in her really early 20s and it's really unfortunate that uh, she left uh you know uh i guess the you know the earth um without really uh fulfilling her true potential she seemed like she was really interested in fashion she probably could have uh impacted uh, a lot of people you know she really uh worked hard and you know she seemed like she was on the right track if she felt like she was wasting her life that would you know pretty much uh make her work hard to you know not feel that way so she, she could probably done a lot of good good things in her life but unfortunately that did not happen so yeah uh, yeah 
Uh, So, I mean, maybe just a good closing thought is, you know, especially for some of the younger people that listen to this or people that have some similar mental challenges in their life where they're bipolar or they have, you know, rapid cycling of emotions, you know, it's, it's really worth calling out that just, just as you know, you and I pointed out, she would have had a, probably a pretty good career in fashion or as an Instagrammer. Um, you know, there are plenty of brilliant, famous, highly successful people that have these same mental challenges and, and, you know, it's, it's not downplaying what they had to go through or like, oh, just get over it. No, they, like, there's some really famous artists, especially, I think artists are probably the most notable folks that often, like, the same thing that gives them the big challenges in their life mentally are also the same things that help drive them to the kind of excellence that maybe she was after. So I think I, I kind of wanted to put that out there, like, look, if you're feeling despondent, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling like you're not going to have a good life because of these issues, please don't feel that way. There's a lot of potential in your life. There's a lot ahead of you. And, you know, you can definitely be successful and still kind of work through these challenges. So, you know, it is it is unfortunate. It almost seems like, you know, we've talked about how sometimes uh, sometimes teenagers will do dumb things like climb, climb down chimneys or something like that. This almost seems like one of those kind of things where, you know, and it, and it may not have even been her conscious decision to do this. Like you said, she may have been just totally out of her head. So I think, you know, really, I, I'd like to kind of end this with a note of hope for everybody that's listening that has any of these kind of challenges and just with the thought that, look, like, just try to keep your, yourself as safe as possible. Try to make sure you have family or someone in your life that can help watch you and, and keep you safe and, and kind of help you help you make the right decisions in life and you know i think i think things will work out uh it's also worth, worth mentioning uh you know our, our our coronavirus episode was pretty well received mm-hmm. uh so i i really would like us to to revisit it because that that topic has gotten even scarier uh and the, and even like literally the no death doubt. count has, has has more than doubled since you and i talked about it uh, a week ago so um no yeah uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this was a great uh, ending point from you, man. And yeah, guys, uh, catch us on episode twenty nine. We currently don't know what topic we will be covering on episode twenty nine. Maybe it's gonna be an update to the coronavirus. Maybe it's gonna be like two episodes next week. Once again, we will see how um, the schedule uh, allows us uh, to work for, for the next week. And yeah, guys, this has been the Elisa Lam coverage. Um, I feel like we're, we're going to be returning to this case. It's definitely an unfortunate, uh, event that had occurred to this young woman. And, you know, we are all saddened by, uh, the, the fact that she died, uh, before she actually, uh, managed to achieve all the things that she felt like she wanted to achieve in her life and yeah guys uh, I guess for today stay safe and catch us on the next episode peace out guys